Hey guys, welcome back to my channel and I hope you guys are doing well and safe wherever you are. Today I'm going to quickly talk a little bit about the Panasonic Lumix S5 Mark II and its ability to adapt any EF lens. And I'm totally surprised that Sigma actually did allow to adapt a different lens manufacturer to be kind of capable enough to work with the Sigma MC21 adapter and that's really amazing and thank you Sigma for doing it. Now in this video I'm using the Tokina 16 to 28 Opera FX 2.8 f2.8 lens which actually is an EF version so EF2 L mount is what I'm using the Sigma MC21 adapter. So these two combinations with the Sigma uh, sorry so these two combinations with the Panasonic Lumix S5 is quite good and that is something that we will talk a little bit in this episode. Now first and foremost thing if in case you're not into an adapted lens and you don't want to get into that system where you kind of have some of the other issues then probably just skip this video and continue watching some other stuff but if in case you're planning to use this camera with an EF lens such as Tokina then definitely consider watching this video. Now first and foremost thing why you should consider buying this ecosystem is basically this lens is pretty much cheap you can get it for 399 US dollars brand new if in case you're looking at a right place at a right time. I got this from Adorama for about like 399 US dollars almost like a year back and more than that but it has been just sitting and I was basically using it in the manual focus and remember in the manual focus because the Lumix S5 Mark 1 doesn't support continuous autofocus functionality with something like this right you can adapt a lens for photo taking a single photo or like you know, cannot have that continuous autofocus functionality on the Sigma S5 and the S1 and the S1R because they are like Gen 1 and they don't support face detect autofocusing system as how the S5 Mark II does support. Now here I'm actually able to kind of get that continuous autofocus functionality but it works pretty well in video mode it just kind of nails it pretty much every time but there's one caveat about this combination there's a lot of sound when you actually kind of do a continuous autofocusing with this particular lens and especially the Tokina lenses are a little bit notorious in this area because they tend to produce a lot of sound when they kind of do the continuous autofocus and I'm kind of sitting static but if I kind of start moving around you'll start hearing that sound in the frame now let me do that Of course, it is a little bit slow. It's because this lens is not purely designed for something like this, like which has pretty much good or focusing system and face detect AF system. So it might kind of struggle a little bit here and there to get that AF functionality as normal as a native lens, but it does work. I mean, this is something that I was expecting to have on the Lumix S cameras from pretty much the S1 and the S1R, but unfortunately Panasonic can sense they kind of bonded to that contrast AF system this was never implemented and S5 Mark II actually does support that and I'm really surprised that it actually works with Tokina lenses because I've tested this same setup on my Sony A6400 with the Tokina 11 to 2080 XI and it never did work and unfortunately here it does work and you can actually leverage this and continue using it as normal as you can probably the same sound would be also in the sigma 18 to 35 as well but not as loud as this but definitely there's some sound on the 18 to 35 as well as you guys know if you want to use it or not but see this AF functionality this is now being recorded almost at the 28 millimeter that means it's it's pretty much zoomed in so I can just zoom out as well and kind of you know this is now somewhere 21 millimeter so 21 millimeter f 2.8 is pretty much decent in my opinion for something like this for 399 bucks I don't expect that you'll get anything as good as this now when it comes to the continuous autofocus you can see that it actually keeps hold of it but when you kind of move the object here and there you can see that the motor is trying to do the AF functionality and kind of makes that sound but again as I said, you can always get rid of it if you don't want to use it, right? You can always put some music and kind of cut down that unnecessary sound. Liked it. The AF just works. You need not worry about it. If in case you're planning to get something like this at budget-friendly lenses, which 
has autofocus system enabled or have that AF functionality, then you can consider this combination. Uh, this was a quick demo as to how this camera works when you adapt the Tokina 16 to 28. So let me do one thing before I kind of end this. I want to just kind of show you the perspective, how it actually looks when you kind of put this lens on a 16 millimeter focal length. So this is the 16 mil focal length and it looks pretty wide, right? I mean, this is what this focal lengths are kind of uh, suitable for. And if in case you're getting into some landscape or astrophotography with this lens, then probably it's a really good combination. And one thing is that you can still come up close and kind of just be in focus. And this is something that I'm really surprised that this lens is capable enough of doing it. <clears throat> And if I can just go back, it kind of comes back to me pretty much normally. So I kind of tend to use this uh, lens a lot uh, because it has that good aperture of f2.8 constant across the focal length. So it gives me a pretty good perspective of just kind of zooming out and zooming in with the same uh, aperture of f2.8 and also maintaining that ISO somewhere nearby. So this was a quick video, guys. I hope you have liked it. Let me know in the comments below if you wanted to kind of do any specific uh, testing with this or probably if you have any questions in mind about this combination, I'll definitely try to answer them. Now, again, this is the Lumix S5 Mark II, which is kind of recording in the 4K MP4 mode, 24 frames per second at f2.8. Shutter speed is 24 and ISO is 1250. I'll catch up with you guys again. Take care. Bye-bye.